In this video, we're going to focus on naming benzene derivatives. So let's start with the monosubstituted benzene derivatives. So how can we name this molecule? Let's say if we have a benzene ring with an NO2 group attached to it. What's the name of this molecule? The NO2 group, it's called nitro. And so combined, this is called nitro benzene. By the way, I recommend having a piece of paper or something to write these names down because these parent names, you need to commit them to memory. Now what about the next one? Let's say if we have a benzene ring with an OH group. What do you think the name is called? The name is called phenol. That's the common name for this. And for this example, we're going to have a benzene ring with an OCH3 group. So basically, this is an ether. The parent name that you want to be familiar with is anisole. So that's the name for that molecule. Next up, we're going to have a benzene ring with an NH2 group. And so if you see this, this is called aniline. Now this one I'm sure you've seen before. Let's say if we have a benzene ring with a carboxylic acid. So this is called benzoic acid. Now sometimes you may see it like this too. So you may see the COOH group. And so it's the same. This is also benzoic acid. Now let's move on to our next example. What is the name of this molecule? What's the parent name? Now we can also write it like this too. So instead of CHO, it's going to be C with a double bond O and a hydrogen attached to it. So we have a benzene ring and an aldehyde functional group. So this is going to be called, instead of benzene, it's benzaldehyde. Now what is the common name for this molecule? Let's say if we have a benzene ring and a carbon-carbon double bond attached to it. The common name is styrene. This is also called vinyl benzene because this is a vinyl group. Now what if we have a ketone next to a benzene ring like this one? This is called acetophenone. When you hear the word acetyl, think of two carbons. This is the acetyl group. And then when you hear the word phenyl, phenyl has to do with a benzene ring with six carbons. And the own tells you we're dealing with a ketone. Now, what if we have a halogen attached to a benzene ring? So let's say if we have a chlorine atom compared to a bromine atom. How can we name these two benzene derivatives? So for the molecule on the left, this is called chlorobenzene. And for the one on the right, you can guess what it is. That's going to be called bromobenzene. Now what if we have an ethyl group attached to a benzene ring? What's the name for this molecule? Now this one is pretty straightforward. This is simply called ethyl benzene. That's it for this example. Now what if we have a methyl group attached to, let's say, a benzene ring? So what's the name of this one? Can we say that it's methyl benzene? That would make sense, but this one has a common name that you need to know, and it's called toluene. You'll see that one a lot, so make sure you know this common name. Next up, we have a benzene ring with 
an amide functional group. So what's the name for this molecule? So benzene plus an amide, this is called benzamide. Now what if we have a benzene ring with a nitrile functional group? What's the name for this molecule? So this one is simply called benzo nitrile. Now what about having a benzene ring and a CH2 group followed by a chlorine atom? What's the name for this molecule? So this is a phenyl group if it's just the benzene ring. But the phenyl group plus this extra carbon, which totals seven carbons, that's called benzyl. And so this is called benzyl chloride. So remember, a phenyl group has six carbons. A benzyl group has seven carbons. It has the benzene ring plus this additional carbon. Now what about this one? How can we name this molecule? So here we have an isopropyl group. And so we can call this isopropyl benzene. It also has another name. The common name is cumene. So if you see cumin, it's not cumin, but uh, cumene, it's isopropyl benzene. Now let's move on to our next example. So here we have a tert butyl group attached to a benzene ring. And so this is going to be called tert butyl benzene. Now what if we have a benzene ring attached to a sulfur atom that has two double bonded oxygen atoms attached to it and an OH group? So if you see this group, this is called a sulfonic acid. Combined, this is benzene sulfonic acid. Kind of like a, carbo like a carboxylic acid, but instead of that, it's a sulfonic acid. Now let's move on to naming disubstituted benzene derivatives. So we saw that if we have one methyl group, it's called toluene. What if we have two methyl groups attached to a benzene ring? How is the name going to be different? If you have two benzene, I mean two methyl groups rather, attached to a benzene ring, it's going to be called a xylene. Now this specifically is known as orthoxylene. It's also called 1,2-dimethylbenzene. So let's call this carbon 1. This will be number 2, 3, and 4. So with respect to the first methyl group, the second methyl group is at the ortho position. Ortho is 1, 2. Meta is 1, 3. Para is 1, 4. Now what about this example? What is the name of this molecule? Go ahead and try it. So this is still going to be xylene, but instead of 1, 2, it's 1, 3. So we can call it 1, 3, dimethylbenzene, or we know that 1, 3 is the same as meta, so we could say this is meta xylene. You could write it as M xylene, or you can actually write out meta xylene. So both ways are acceptable. So what do you think the name for this compound is going to be? So let's call this carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can call it 1, 4 
dimethylbenzene, or we know that 1,4 is the same as para. And so we can call it para xylene, or we could just say P dash xylene. Now let's move on to our next example. So now we have two different groups attached to a benzene ring. So how can we name this compound? Well, first, we need to identify the parent name. We know that a benzene ring plus a methyl group is called toluene. And so that's going to be the parent name. Therefore, we're going to count the methyl group is going to be carbon 1 because it's part of the parent name. So therefore, we're going to call this 2 bromo toluene or we could say ortho bromo toluene you can use ortho meta and para for any time you have a di substituted benzene derivative that's when you have only two groups attached to it so let's try another example so let's say we have a CHO group and a CL go ahead and name this benzene derivative. So a benzene ring with a CHO group, that's called benzaldehyde. So that's the parent name, which means that the aldehyde functional group is on carbon 1. So we can call this 3 chloro benzaldehyde, or we could say it's meta chloro benzaldehyde, because meta corresponds to the 1, 3 positions. Now let's try another example. So let's say we have an OCH3 group and at the same time we have an NO2 group. So what is the name of this aromatic compound? So the NO2 group is called nitro and the benzene ring with an OCH3 group is called anisol. So the parent name is going to be anisole. And the nitro group is on carbon 2. So we can call this 2 nitro anisole or ortho nitro anisole. Now let's move on to tri substituted benzene derivatives. So go ahead and name the molecule. So the parent name is going to be phenol because that's the benzene ring with the OH group. It doesn't make sense to use nitrobenzene as the parent name, especially when there's two of them. So we need to count this like this in a clockwise direction so that we can get the lowest numbers. So this is going to be called 2 comma 4 dinitro because we have two of them on carbons 2 and 4, and then phenol. Now for our next example, we're going to have a carboxylic acid, a bromine atom, and a nitro group attached to the benzene ring. So feel free to pause the video and try this example. So let's start with the parent name. The parent name is going to include the benzene ring and the carboxylic acid. So combined, we know that to be benzoic acid, which means this is carbon 1. Now, how should we count it? In a clockwise direction or in a counterclockwise direction? So if we try the counterclockwise direction, notice that the bromine atom is on carbon 3 and the nitro group is on carbon 6. But if we count it clockwise, the nitro is on carbon 2, the bromine is on carbon 5. And so 2 is less than 3, therefore we're going to count it in the clockwise direction. Now we need to put it in alphabetical order. So bromo comes before nitro, so it's going to be 5-bromo-2-nitro benzoic acid. 
And so that's how we can name this molecule. Let's try one more example. And so for this example, we're going to have a bromine atom, a nitro group, and at the same time, a chlorine atom. So what do you think the name of this aromatic compound will be? And how should we count it? Well, if we count it this way, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the numbers will be 1, 3, 4. If we count it this way, we will get lower numbers. 1, 2, 4 instead of 1, 3, 4. And we don't want to start with nitro group because if we count it this way, this is going to be 1, 2, 5. And so we don't want that. Or if we count it this way, it's going to be 1, 3, 6, which is even worse. So this is the best option. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, we have a 4-bromo. We have a 1-chloro and a 2-nitro. So we need to put the substituents in alphabetical order. So it's going to be 4-bromo and then 1-chloro become C4C and then dash 2-nitro benzene. And so that's how we can name this particular aromatic compound. And so that's it for this video. Now you know how to name benzene derivatives. Thanks for watching.